Planning on traveling this summer? Make saving at the pump part of your plans with two times the fuel points from Harris Teeter. It's easy. Download your eVic coupon, and for every dollar you spend with your Vic card, you'll get two fuel points. That's up to one dollar per gallon on quality fuel at participating BP and Harris Teeter fuel centers. Download your eVic coupon today and save money at the pump all summer long with eVic and Harris Teeter fuel points. These sounds are the sounds of lower emissions. That's because one day soon, engines like these could run on lower emission fuel. Renewable diesel derived from plants that's engineered to keep millions of tons of CO2 out of the air. At ExxonMobil, we're working to supply the energy the world needs today, while playing a leading role in the transportation sector's transition to a lower emission future. It's one of the ways we're advancing climate solutions. Learn more at exxonmobil.com fuels. What up, y'all? One Sir Grove here. Just getting ready to go on tour with D Hog 495L4, Rap Group Alliance, D Hog 918 Boys, D Hog K Dub, the homie Sin. That's right. And anyone else, man, who is down to ride, 495L4, Rap Group Alliance, worldwide. So, what we got going on is that we are in preparation mode to go on tour. Like I said, D-Hog, K-Dub, the homie Sen, formerly known as, ooh, Sen the Soul Stealer. No longer Sen the Soul Stealer, just Sen. S-E-N, Sierra Echo November, a.k.a. Senzilla, a.k.a. the Silverback Gorilla. So, D-Hog, K-Dub, Sin, yours truly, one Sir Grove, and any of the other homies that are free and available to go on tour to rock the mic. So we've been working on our stage performances, choreography. We've been getting it down to a science. When uh, in our earlier years, a lot of us, we were, when I, and I'm speaking for the 495L4 organization, extended because we've been part of something known as CA, CA, which is the larger alliance. And, uh, well, there are guys who uh, started off rhyming with us on street corners and on porches, on, on the stoop, on stoops. I'm saying rhyming on stoops, porches, street corners, recess, the playground, like when we were kids in ciphers. In ciphers on playgrounds, at recess, at school, on school grounds, play yards. So, <clears throat> kids, we were, and we were out on the playground, some would call it the play yard, out recess, and uh, out on recess, and someone would be like, yo, you guys want to like bust some raps, and, and then someone else would be like, yeah, let's do that, and then someone else would be like, yo, are you guys like about to bust some raps, and we're like, yeah, we just said that, you heard, and he's like, word, and then somebody else would chime in like, oh man, y'all got a cypher going, and the next thing you know, there's a circle, or a square, or whatever configuration geometrically, sacred geometry, cats are in the, in the cypher, and, and, and then we would just be busting lyrics. Lyrics. Be like, all right, go. And then someone who wasn't afraid to bust lyrics would just come out and just say whatever, like maybe a freestyle. Sometimes it was a written rhyme that someone was trying to memorize, you know what I mean, that they had written earlier. And that's how it went down. So some guys I know, they've never actually been on stage. They've never rocked shows. They've never been on the microphone in front of an audience. Some guys are just old school from the neighborhood, and they've just been spitting lyrics like in the streets since like back in the good old days, like decades ago, and they've never had the opportunity to get up on the mic. It's not, well, they've had the opportunity, they've just never gotten on stage because they were more street performers than they were, you know, than they decided to be on stage. They could have been on stage, they could still be on stage. I'm just saying there are a lot of cats that are part of the organization. Some of us have been on stage and have rocked microphones formally in front of audiences and others have not. Imagine that being the warm-up, the lead-up, the intro. I am One Sir Grove, Master MC. That is Master, Master of Ceremonies. I know that sounds a little redundant because MC stands for Master of Ceremonies. And I am the Master 
of my own master of MCs. <laughs> I am MC1 Sir Grove, Sir Grove ED, aka Alpha Analytical Grove Numeric X, aka Big Grove Dog, aka One Sir Grove, O S G O E, that's One Sir Grove of EVT and England. Because I am of European American heritage, I'm a brown skinned North American with roots to many different continents. So that being said, we're rocking mics and about to go on tour. So we're just in preparation mode, doing some prep work, some pre-production, some production, getting some songs down, getting some dance moves down, getting some grooves down. It's a lot of work when you're in the music industry, when you're an entertainer, when you're in showbiz. A lot of moving parts, a lot of components, a lot of static and moving parts. One of the things that I've never done before is I've never really gotten into merch as much as I am getting into merch. That is merchandise now. We used to do some airbrush t-shirts and a little something here and there on the side like, yo, you want to buy a cassette? I mean, that's selling tapes in parks and at house parties and at shows that we would do. But in terms of like t-shirts and things like that, I think there were some people that were like, yo, I want a shirt with my name on it. And we may have extended that to people outside of our own crew. If I recall correctly, we may have done up a shirt or two or more for some folks that wanted uh, shirts like we had put in an order with the dude, whoever it was in our crew at the time that was doing the shirts. But we've never like mass manufactured or mass printed, mass produced merchandise like we are doing now. So the mode that I'm in right now on the marketing and advertising side of pre-tour, like the pre-tour, and we're going to start off doing a show here, a show there, and then gradually, eventually move up to doing more and more shows as the audience grows. So it's not like we're going out on a major worldwide tour like in a few weeks from now or a couple of weeks or a week or a few days or like a month from now. We're just going to start doing shows and uh, it's going to lead to bigger and better shows each and every time. I know that because I've done shows before. I did shows on the West Coast and I would produce them myself um, in addition to working with other folks on the production of shows indoor shows, outdoor shows. Um, so, and I've, and I've worked with not just 495L4, our own rap group. I have also worked with other crews, other groups. So I'm not new to this business, this industry. I've been in it for 25 plus years, a quarter of a century. And we have uh, worked on a lot of collaboration projects, efforts with uh, a lot of different, like I said, crews, posses, groups, organizations we've had a lot of cross promotions and whatnot well now the focus is 495l4 now we're focused on our rap group and alliance and getting out doing shows professionally organized shows produced choreographed sponsored promoted advertised for marketed yes It's a lot of words, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of effort, it's a lot of energy, and uh, it takes a great deal of uh, patience and resources. If you're going to do a show, man, it's not just like, you know, if you're going to do a show of the magnitude and the order and proportion of what it is that I am uh, talking about, it's not like... You know, you can just like say, come on, guys, let's go down, hop in the ride, get on the road. And then, okay, now we did a show. There's a lot that goes into it to make it happen the right way and uh, and to do it professionally um, as a listers, not underground artists is mainstream. We're mainstream now. We're no longer underground rappers. We're no longer underground musicians. We're no longer underground trap stars. We are not. We are mainstream artists now, and we are working with multi-platinum artists and producers. 
That's right, a lot of big announcements coming from L4, 495, 495, L4, that is 495, L4, Rap Group Alliance. A lot of major announcements coming soon. So, working on some major, you can put L4 first, you can put 495 first, it doesn't matter, it's the same organization. It's, it's, uh, they're lyrics, so it's either or, I mean... They're both one and of the same. So just out of respect, you can say L4. You can say 495. You can say 495 L4. You can say L4 495. It's the same brand. It's the same group. It's the same syndicate, syndication, organization, network, globally, global, worldwide. Like I said, there's a lot that goes into this. And in order to brand, you have to have it all down pat. You have to know the history. It's a saga. It's a legacy. It's a dynasty. It is a rap group empire. And it spans many decades, many generations. There are younger cats that came up in our neighborhood who always wanted to be part of the crew. And so they joined on in the ranks. Some were hangers on, just kind of chilling, loosely affiliated. Some were a little bit more affiliated than others. By the way, my autobiography is, uh, is in the works. It is being written. Uh, I am many chapters into it, and I will probably release it in parts. I will probably put out uh, book one, book two, something along those lines, because why not? Why, why, why wait to write an entire book when I can put it out? In chapters, I know some artists, some uh, authors, some uh, musicians with their own autobiographies. They would never do that. They would wait until they have the whole thing written. That's just not me, man. It's the 21st century. I can do a book one, book two, just to get something out there. I'm working on a lot of projects, man. If I want to put out chapters one, two, three, and call it book one, I can do that, and I will do that for fans who want to hear chapters one, two, three sooner than later. You know what I mean? Book one, autobiography, no cliche by Rob Lee, a.k.a. One Sir Grove. I'm just saying, man, I'm working on tour production, tour advertising marketing, tour promotions. So Doug Crawford is an artist who I personally signed a long time ago to AONN Records. I am no longer the owner of AONN Records. I transferred ownership to one of my business partners, Young Chili. That's C H I L E. Like the country spelling, but not the country chili. C H I L E, Young Chili, because there was another dude whose name was spelled like Chili Willy, like C H I L L Y. And uh, so we're like, because. Chili, my my dude, Young Chili, whose name is spelled C-H-I-L-E, he also goes by Walking Winter. So the whole concept is like, you know, Walking Winter, Chilled Air, Chili, right? But since somebody else already had Chili, C-H-I-L-L-Y, he was like, yo, just fuck it. Just spell it differently, C-H-I-L-E, Young Chili. So it's always been Young Chili and um, a.k.a. Walking Winter, a.k.a. High the whole way, aka YC1. So he's the owner of his own label, AONN Records. That's Access One Network Northwest, for which he is now the owner of that division of AONN Records. I am the founder. Uh, Chili and I have worked together for multiple decades now. We, in the neighborhood of Riverside, Ever Washington, uh, came up in the game together with our multiple squads. That is his squad, my squad. We combine our teams. We combine my team being, well, his team being the blue team, my team being the red team. You always got to put the other team first, man, when you're, you know, talking respectfully. So that being said, um, at some point, we agreed that I would... Uh, be the founder doing executive production. Chili would be at the helm. He would be at the head of the label as the CEO president. And so then after I transferred ownership to him for AON and Records uh, Northwest Division, I then uh, started a new entity out here on the East Coast because all the 
preceding was on the West Coast. So I started an entity business enterprise out here called EmpireStateMoney.com. EmpireStateMoney.com. That is E-S-M-D-C, EmpireStateMoney.com. So back in the day when I was with AONN Records on the West Coast in the Pacific Northwest Puget Sound, I signed Doug Crawford from Canada. Doug Crawford and Aaron Loy have long been part of a group in Canada called Secret Society. And so Doug and Aaron Loy, Doug Crawford and Aaron Loy of Secret Society, uh, <clears throat> AONN Records Canada, they uh, were on a tour some many moons ago, and I put that tour together with Doug. Doug and I put that tour, that cross Canada tour together. And so Doug and I have worked on many projects in the past. And, uh, one of which was a cross Canada tour. So you see, there's a lot of information. There's, there are a lot of, like I said, moving parts, a lot of pieces, uh, to work with. And, and it's a great deal of effort and it takes a lot of, um, it takes a lot of energy. So not everyone's up to the task. Some people want to go off and do this and do that, and they're not so much interested in tours and going on tour and all the work that goes into it because it's an around-the-clock effort. It's an around-the-clock effort. It takes, it takes the entire day, the entire night. I mean, you're constantly fucking working. So it's not for everyone. Some people, they're more interested in keeping up with the Kardashians and this and that and knowing, you know, what's going on with Britney Spears. And I'm just simply saying they're not interested in working like we work and doing the kind of work that we do because the kind of stuff that we do, it's complex. It's complicated. Um, it takes it takes a tremendous amount of fucking effort to do what we do. So right now I'm focused on the clothing line 495 L4 brand. 495L4 Alliance Brand Gear G-E-A-R What does the G-E-A-R stand for? Because it is an acronym So it's Group Empire Alliance Rap That's Group Empire Alliance Rap I said G-E-A-R Group Empire Alliance Rap That is our clothing line The larger parent company Being EmpireStateMoney.com And then Beneath that is Farther East World Clothing. That's F-A-R, Farther East World Clothing. Farther East World Clothing. So that's the clothing line. And um, F-E-W, F-A-R, and F-E-W is also an acronym, F. E W Farther East World Clothing, and with that we have multicolored ball caps, hoodies, sweat jackets, T-shirts, and we even have shoes. We even have shoes. And one of the things that I have not done, and that I am doing now, uh, and that is another focus of mine: funnels. So <laughs> now is the time. If you really want to get on board, those of you who have not yet fully subscribed, fully gotten on board, I have never thus far sold a product online outside of CDs, cassette tapes, that is music, singles. I have never sold anything as focused as I am now in terms of digital assets. I have never gotten behind a product in the way that I'm now getting behind the funnels. Funnels, funnels, funnels. If you are not using funnels to market online, I cannot tell you what to do. I cannot give you business or legal advice. Funnels is what we, my crew, what we, that's what we are doing. We are using, that is, utilizing funnels to market our materials and Third parties that we also promote for, brands, campaigns, companies, you name it. Hundreds of different companies, brands, organizations, EmpireStateMoney.com promotes, advertises for, and markets 
Hundreds of companies rely on EmpireStateMoney.com. And it would not be nice of us to make money, large sums of money, without paying it forward. Giving some of it back to the community and helping out folks who want to be part of what we're part of. So now is the time that in contrast to everything that we've done before, that we let some people in on what it is that we're doing on a financial level. And before, as we were coming up in the ranks and as we were organizing and structuring and further organizing and further structuring and calibrating and, you know, tweaking this and, and, you know, tweaking that just, you know, proper calibration to make sure that the product for 2022 and beyond, just making sure that the product is up to industry standards at that highest level of professionalism. We, d- we went through a lot of experimental phases and stages. Planning on traveling this summer? Make saving at the pump part of your plans with two times the fuel points from Harris Teeter. It's easy. Download your eVIC coupon, and for every dollar you spend with your VIC card, you'll get two fuel points. That's up to $1 per gallon on quality fuel at participating BP and Harris Teeter fuel centers. Download your eVIC coupon today and save money at the pump all summer long with eVIC and Harris Teeter fuel points. And we, you know, we did a lot of stuff underground, a lot of freestyles, a lot of drunken freestyles. We made shit. Some of it sounded like shit. Some of it sounded like crap. I mean, that just happens, man. When you're, you know, experimenting, when you're looking for that fucking sound, you'll make some shit. It just sounds cringy, and you're just like, oh my god, I can't believe I fucking recorded that. I, the the fucking equipment that I was using was garbage. It was trash, and my lyrics were trash, and it just didn't flow, and it sounded all fucked up, and it wasn't right, and that was a fucking not good vibe. So you learn. And you, you, you learn from that. Those are lessons. You're just like, huh, well, I was underground and I was drunk and uh, I'm way fucking better than that now. And I've and I've honed my skills. I've honed my skills. So we weren't really offering much for sale other than CDs, um, cassette tapes. Like I said, I can't really think of anything else that we were selling back then. Like I said, we weren't really selling merchandise. We didn't have the merch game on back in the 19, late 80s, early 1990s. They didn't have the different types of print on demand and internet delivery, uh, manufacturing production and design systems that they have now. They just weren't available. If you wanted to make something in bulk, you needed to have a shitload of money and you needed to find a company that could work with you and then you would shell out a bunch of cash, you would buy a bunch of t-shirts and then you would sell them at concerts and shows and house parties and in the streets, you know, in parks and at, you know, whatever, clubs and whatnot, street corners, however you would rock it. And we did a little bit of that, but... You know, man, we're from the hood, so we didn't have a whole lot of cash, you know? We were drug dealers at some point, and then when we were selling dope, we weren't really so much focused on the merch and having our game down in that way because we just, we, we just quite frankly, we just weren't. We were more focused on just selling the dope and getting the dope money. And I know that some groups, they, they do both. They, they've got the dope game down, and I'm not promoting, embellishing uh, or, you know, advertising, promoting dope sales. I'm, I'm not condoning it or advocating it, advocating it or condoning it or promoting it in any way, shape or form. Stay away from gangs and drugs. Please do. I'm just simply saying that back in the day, that was a reality is that some, some crews, they would sell the dope, they take the dope money and then they would invest in, Uh, their merchandise and they would sell dope and they would sell merch at the same time hey that's them i think our thing was man we didn't want to get involved in any type of rico shit so we were just kind of looking at it like yo yeah we're drug dealers and that sucks i mean that's just the nature of reality like fuck we're from poor families and you know we could go get jobs at like burger joints and shit which some of us did but at the same time man we were just in the streets trying to survive and I mean, we did a little bit of merchandising, like I said, but we just didn't really fucking have 
a serious focus on it in the way that we could have. And so we just didn't do it. And so that's that's no need to over explain anything. That's really just the reality is that we just didn't fucking focus on taking whatever money we had, whether it, you know, was legitimate or illegitimate. We just we didn't do the merchandise back then. Um, I was exploring and researching different companies where we could get whatever bulk materials buy in bulk, uh, get our inventory. In fact, you know what? I have a buddy from uh, the neighborhood, from the crew, and he actually went on to get his real estate license before I had my real estate license. He actually inspired me and encouraged me to get my real estate license, which I ult- ultimately did. And um, before I was a private investor uh, in commercial and residential real estate. I was a licensed real estate agent for approximately five years, a half a decade. Well, (laughs) more than a decade before I was a licensed real estate agent, he was a real estate agent. And he, uh, he started his own clothing line back in the 1990s, early 2000s. And, uh, you know, seeing how he did it also inspired me I mean, in the neighborhood, he was like my big bro. Like, you know, we weren't biologically related, but we were brothers from another mother. And um, so, you know, being part of the same crew, the same clique, the same clan, uh, I watched how he did it. I mean, he's an older bro. You know, he was always protective and always defended, you know, the crew, us, me, all of us. And um, so I looked up to him, man. You know, my big bro in the streets, we played sports together, too, when we were even younger, before the gang shit. So, anyway, um, he did it professionally. You know, he sold, like, I think it was, like, five or six homes just right off the bat. Like, a lot of agents don't do that. He's, like, but he had the looks, you know what I'm saying, and the charisma, and he's just, like, knocked it out the park, man, one after another. So, he came up on some loot, if you can imagine selling five or six homes, like, one after another back in the, the late 90s and early 2000s. I mean, that's some fucking dough back then. I mean, even today, shit, even more today. So, anyway, he did that, and then he started his own clothing line, and I was really impressed. Like, damn, you know, and he got his college degree, his four-year college degree and everything. This is back in the late 90s, early 2000s. He even graduated a year ahead of um, of uh, the class in high school. So he was in college before anyone else. And I'm just like, damn, this bro is prodigious, man. Like, he's a prodigy. He's a scholar. Now he's got his real estate um, license. He got his four-year degree real quick like that. He did it over the Internet, and it's just like, boom, got his four-year degree. And uh, then he started his own clothing line. So I'm like, yo, bro's coming up like Carl Kanai. He's coming up like Cross Colors. Like, man, this cat is coming up like FUBU and like Rockaware. So I'm just saying, like, he was coming up, man, like No Limit back in the day. And I was like, yo, bro's doing it. So I'm like, let me just follow in his footsteps, man, and, 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 and do it how bro's doing it. So that's how I did it. And that's real talk. And uh, he and I, we appear on a single that uh, came out in the year 1995 called um, Creeping Out of the Darkness. Creeping up out of the darkness, ally you can't see, blinded by the light, attempted to, uh, what is it? Blinded by the light, um, this is, this is, this is uh, creeping up out of the darkness, ally you can't see, blinded by the light, time to, oh yeah, 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 creeping up out of the darkness, ally you can't see, blinded by the light, time to face reality, creeping up out of the darkness, ally you can't see, blinded by the light, time to face reality, that chorus is done by, um, Tot Carlo, aka, um, Tot Loon, and the homie Chris Fate, uh, he does the chorus. That's his chorus. That's not my chorus, but it's on the song that we all did. So Tot Loon, a.k.a., like I said, Tot Carlo, he does the chorus that I just did. And that's to the song Creeping Out of the Darkness. He's not the homie that I'm referring to. I'm talking about the homie Aaron. Aaron, the homie from... Uh, way, 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 way back in the day when we were like elementary school, we played sports together. So I followed in his footsteps. You know what I'm saying? Tot, Tot Loon is the homie too. Tot Loon is younger than me though. Tot, Tot Loon is younger than me. So, but I mean, we're all homies from the, from the hood. We're all homies from the neighborhood. And I'm just saying that in terms of that era in 1995, 
the homie Aaron. He appears on the track creeping out of the darkness. And uh, it was because of his leadership that, you know what I'm saying, that's the path that I took, man, um, to the clothing line because he inspired me to do that. So shout-outs to Aaron. Shout-outs to Tot Loon, a.k.a. Tot Carlo. Um, yeah, so anyway, uh, y'all can look that up, Criminal Alliance, uh, Creeping Out of the Darkness, 1995. There's a salvaged um, copy version of it on YouTube. I need to find the original. The original was made with the sub-oscillating bass frequency at Jimmy Free Recordings in Shoreline, Washington. And um, it, 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 the bass frequency, it's so deep, it booms, and it's, like, dangerous. It can, like, destroy speaker systems. That's, that's, that's how... That's how much it booms. I mean, it booms fucking tremendously. It's like, if you know DJ Magic Mike, many of you do not because we're living in 2022. And DJ Magic Mike was a big name um, out on the streets in the music recording hip-hop urban music industry back in the 19, like, 80s, 90s. Uh, if I have that timeline correct... But yeah, DJ Magic Mike, he made like low rider music, like trunk rattling music. Like it would rattle your trunk, shake your trunk, like the shit would boom, 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 boom. Shit was crazy. So we went to Jimmy Free Recordings, a professional recording studio that had worked on projects for Microsoft even. Microsoft was even a client. This is Washington State, so Microsoft is a hop, skip, and a jump from Shoreline. Microsoft is located in Redmond. Shoreline is right down the street, more or less. Anyway, um, back in the day before there was like major traffic, you could probably like fucking gun it in traffic and be from Shoreline to Redmond in like a half an hour or some shit. Anyway, point is that um, Jimmy Free Recordings hooked us up on that track, Creeping Out of the Darkness, and that shit booms in your speaker system, and uh, it will rattle your trunk and uh, disturb your neighbors and shit type shit, but unfortunately, that cassette tape was made in limited numbers and quantities, I should say, rather same shit, but quantities sounds a little bit more uh, professional and uh, so, and specific, so anyway, um, Jimmy Free Recording that track, Creeping Out of the Darkness, Collectible Item uh, from Criminal Alliance, CA, the group CA, Criminal Alliance, 1995. Uh, there may be a handful of copies out in the multiverse somewhere. And when I uploaded a copy to the internet, it was like at a time in history when it was like 486 desktop computers. And I had to go from like speaker to speaker. I didn't have a way to upload the original like sound. So the sound that's on the the <clears throat> the version that is uploaded to the internet currently on YouTube, it doesn't sound the way that it's supposed to. There's no bass to it. There's no boom. Boom. Ba boom boom boom. That's how this shit really started on the original shit. And people were surprised because it, it goes, ding, 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 ding. There's like a gong and shit at the beginning with some static, some like static that's looped on like an album so it sounds antique and then it, or antiquated. And then it just comes in, boom, 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 creeping up out of the dark. And you hear the bass and you're like, holy shit. I mean, the hairs on my arm stand up when I'm like, recalling this event i mean i'm just saying like y'all don't even know what i'm talking about and i will find a copy to creeping out of the darkness one of the original copies and i will upload that shit and you can download it i don't know how long it's going to take me to find a copy but i'm sure if i dangle some money out there someone's got a fucking cassette tape somewhere somewhere over the rainbow um but yeah so listen i'm gonna keep this under 35 minutes i'm just excited because you know, we're doing merchandise. We're merchandising now. Kind of like Wu-Tang Clan. Shout outs to Wu-Tang. Um, I mean, look, man. We learn from Wu, too, man. We learn from Wu-Tang. They are the kings of merchandising, man. I mean, the kings and queens. I don't know. I'm sure they got female associates, you know, as well. So I'm just saying they are legendary ultra. And so, like, I mean, yeah. 
So now we're getting our merch game on like other crews. Shout outs to No Limit, Master P and his team. Um, I'm just saying, man. Shout outs to E40 in the Bay Area where I used to live. You know what I'm saying? He got his merch game on Ultra. You know, Master P and E40 and Wu Tang, they got ultra legendary marketing merchandising skills. And so 495L4, we just have to we just we just have to follow in those same footsteps of those who came before us. Look at Bone Thugs and Harmony, man. Ultra legendary merchandising. Look at NWA before Bone Thugs and Harmony. The same lineage. Bone is part of NWA. NWA, look at how man, NWA legendary ultra marketing merchandising advertising promotions so enters stage 495l4 rap group alliance whoever wants to be part of this movement whoever wants to get down with it the funnels is where it is again i cannot give any kind of legal business marketing advice I can't do that. I can simply tell you that I am behind the funnels because I had to get up to speed on the funnels. I didn't even know how the funnels worked 100% and still don't entirely know because there's so much to know. And I study funnels around, funneling around the clock. I know some of you are like, Grove, you're talking about funnels. What the fuck are funnels? So let me be Not like some of the so-called gurus who are on the internet right now marketing funnels and other shit where they will talk to you as if you're supposed to know what the fuck shit is and they never even explain to you what the fuck it is. So what a funnel is, is it's a system of online marketing and promotions for your product and or other third party products. That's my definition. Someone may and probably will give you a slightly or maybe not so slightly different definition. But that's how I define it. So it's software is what it is. That's what a funnel is. And funnels are not exactly widely used yet. They are, but they're not. And I know that sounds contradictory. What do I mean by that? There are people who are hip. They are privy. They know about funnels. And it's just kind of like when, for example, they used to have these stand-up arcade games, which they still have in some places, where you can play an arcade game that stands up and you put quarters or tokens or a card or credits into it and you stand up and you play with the joystick and little buttons and things. Okay, a stand-up arcade game. Well, back in the day, one Day, all of a sudden, there was a home game console system that had some of the games from the stand up arcade games. They just like, I went to this store and I was like, What am I fucking seeing? Is, 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 what? Super fucking Mario Brothers from the arcade? Holy shit. It. Dude, I swear I about fucking fell out. I was in Auburn, Washington. Auburn, Washington State. A-U-B-U-R-N. And I was at this uh, electronic store. Can't remember what it was. It wasn't Circuit City, but it may have been. It was something similar to Circuit City, and I don't know if Circuit City exists anymore, where it does, if it does. I thought it went out, but it may still exist somewhere, but then again, it may not. I'm just saying that for legal purposes and to cover my ass. Legal disclaimer, I don't know. But I can't remember if this was... Maybe it was Circuit City. Maybe it wasn't. But anyway, I was looking at this game console, and I was like, are you fucking serious? They've taken the arcade games, and you can play this at home now? Are you fu-? Like, most... I'm, listen, a lot of people didn't know that they made a game fucking system for the arcade stand-up shit. You don't have to put quarters in a machine anymore. You can play it at fucking home. What? Are you fucking serious? Dude. 
most of you have no idea what the fuck I'm talking, listen, about. That was one of the most magical times in human fucking history on record in modern fucking times. That was the Nintendo Entertainment System. I got it for Christmas some months later, okay? Most kids didn't know that it was in stores at first. Like, it because w- I would go to school, and I'm like, yo, bro, you know that there's a system you can buy? They're like, what do you mean? And I'm like, you know the, the fucking video games that we play all, like every day, the arcade shit? I was in Auburn, okay, because w- then I'm back in Everett. I'm back... Auburn and Everett, they're, they're kind of a distance from each other. So, like, many, many, like, Auburn is south of Seattle. And Seattle is 26 miles, like, 30 miles south of Everett. So, 30 miles and then some more miles. Like, it's like, it's, it's, it's a distance. It's far. So, anyway, I, my mother was visiting one of her boyfriends, or, or her, <laughs> she had one boyfriend at the time. She was visiting her boyfriend. Um, that she'd been in the military with in the same unit, and he lived in Auburn. He, like, owns um, apartments and shit. He's, they're not together anymore. Um, but the point is is that they were together for, like, 10 years, and anyway, he would come up to our place in Everett, and then, alternatively, we would go to Auburn, where he lived. I believe that Sir mix at some point lived in Auburn. I don't know if he still does, but I know that he has um, in the past. So anyway... Rapper, Sir mix a lot. So anyway, way back in the 1980s, we're in Auburn, and we go to this store, and I see this, and then, like, I'm, like, mind blown, and I'm, like, playing the game in the store, and then I go back to school, and this is going to exceed 40 minutes. Sorry, I got excited about retro gaming. Um, this is a St. Jude moment. Ashton was a high-level athlete, and in a, an instant, your world flips. And your healthy five-year-old competitive cheerleader has a brain tumor. And the physician was like, your best option is St. Jude. Receiving treatment that was life-saving for our child and knowing that that treatment would be of no cost to us was a huge weight lifted. Learn more at stjude.org. A fever spiking in the middle of the night? A sudden shortness of breath? A misstep off the porch? Emergencies can happen when you least expect it. Tyson's Emergency is now open and conveniently located near the Leesburg Pike and Chainbridge Road intersection. Our highly skilled team of emergency experts are ready to care for you and your family 24-7. When emergencies hit close to home, we're just as close. Learn more at Tyson'sEmergency.com. Um, I know you're like, how does this relate to 495L4 uh, and merchandising, uh, marketing and advertising, promotions growth, and like going on tour and like clothing and like merchandise and like fashion and apparel? Come on, Grove, get to the point. Well, I am. Okay, so calm fucking down. Sorry that this exceeds 40 minutes when I said it wouldn't. I apologize. So anyway, like I said, there's a lot of information. Now, if I had typed this as part of a book... Okay, this, you know how fucking long it would have taken me to type this shit? Like, weeks. Okay? So, that's why I use podcast. So, any fucking who. Um, because this shit is many books. Y'all are getting books worth of information. Okay? Books. 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 For basically almost free. So, I know there are some advertisements that come on, you know what I'm saying? Because this is like advertising, advertisement supported, and I get that. Shout outs to our advertisers, sponsors, promoters. So anyway, um, future endorsements, endorsers, um, people with deep pockets, philanthropists, folks like the late Jerry Heller. I'm just saying shout outs, RIP Jerry Heller. So, um, and I mean that sincerely. So, I go back to Everett, and I'm telling my friends, I'm like, yo, you're never going to fucking believe. And they're like, what are you saying? And I'm like, yes, yes, there's a game. And they're like, well, where do we buy it? And I was like, I saw it at the store in fucking, I was a kid. I was like 12 years old or some shit. I'm like, I saw it at a store in Auburn. And they're like, well, what store? And I'm like, I think it was called uh, something, but you, and, and, and you can buy And they're like, so anyway, listen, listen. Some weeks later, boom. Did y'all hear that finger, the, fin- the thumb and finger, like, for, like, what is that, my middle finger, the thumb, like the snap? Just like that. A few weeks later, just like that. The game system pops up at the Everett Mall, and kids go bonkers. 
fucking bananas because you could then play it at the Everett Mall. What? Oh my god! They had kids lined up to play the video games at the Everett fucking mall and at the kiosk, and you could play the games that you used to play at the arcade for free. Because they were on demo, okay, you could get in line and you could try the Nintendo Entertainment System, and they had kids on, like, this side, that side, that side, like, four sides or some shit or two sides, however they had it, oh my god, that's when everyone found out about the Nintendo Entertainment System, and then every fucking kid wanted that shit in North America. Oh my god. OMG, OMG, OMG. Come on, man. That was the greatest shit ever. Ever. But in the beginning, when I brought the Intel back from Auburn, it wasn't at the Everett Mall in my, our city at the time. You see... It was in Auburn, kind of like a higher end, richer version of Everett, if you will. And so like it took a minute for Everett some weeks to get wind, the word. And then it was out everywhere and the word spread like wildfire. So the point is, and then every kid in the fucking world had to have the shit. Except for the kids in Japan who already had it before us. Damn! Imagine being in Japan and getting it first. OMG. They had it for several years before we had it. They had something known as the Super Famicom. Don't quote me on that. Don't take my word for it. Google it. Look it up on YouTube. I know some of you are like, Grove, I've seen the entire history of Famicom. Well, I beg to differ because I keep seeing documentary after documentary that it's additional information that, not to sound redundant, keeps getting added, okay? More and more emerges uh, all the time. So there's different stories, programmers, people that were investors and analysts and executives, okay? There are a lot of different personalities that have not yet come forward, uh, motherfucker. Um, and uh, yeah, so slow your roll. You haven't heard the whole fucking story because it'll probably never end the story. That's how much info there is. I'm talking about the world of video gaming, man. The early fucking years and days of Nintendo and Sega and all that shit, okay? Before Sonic the Hedgehog and all that shit existed. And yes, I know that's Sega. That's not Nintendo. But the point is is that those days of Mario and Luigi, Super Mario Brothers, and Castlevania, and uh, Mega Man. What? Mega Man? Holy shit. And Link from The Legend of Zelda. The Legend of Zelda and Hyrule? O-M-G. Gradius? Come on. How many of you fucking are familiar with the game Gradius? And then in Gradius, there's, there's a warp zone where when you go through the warp zone, you come out in some other time space and you're in space and they have the heads, the big stone monuments from Easter Island and they're spinning around rotating in space and you're in this vortex of fucking spinning large stone faces and heads from Easter Island. What? Gradius? G-R-A-D-I-U-S? Gradius? You've never fucking played that game. A lot of you. But you should. Okay? Because it's one of the greatest fucking games of all time. There are thousands of games in the universe that I'm referring to here. Before this universe ever existed, I was trying to share this information with my friends about this new universe that we were about to intersect with. And they were like, are you sure? Like, for real? Are you sure? Like, the stand-up arcade games? Like, we can play them at home now on something called the Nintendo Entertainment System? And I'm like, yes. Yes affirmative so my larger point to y'all funnels the next 
biggest thing in the world of internet marketing, advertising, promotions, distribution of your products and or third party products that you are advertising, promoting, marketing in the world realm universe of affiliate marketing. If you're looking for a way to make motherfucking money on the internet, I am being honest. I don't know how exactly you would do it without a funnel because a funnel is an integral part of the process. Now listen, some people are not using funnels. Some people don't even know what the fuck a funnel is. And they've been marketing and advertising and promoting their own shit and other people's shit for years. I know you're like, crazy, what? No, I've even heard of a funnel grove. Some people haven't. I'm just being honest. They've used a thousand different fucking tools, but they've never used a funnel. Guess what? I just started using a funnel about um, a few days ago. Basically, I mean, it's not a few days. It's been over a month, okay? I, I kind of got connected a little bit before that even too. But listen, I've been building my funnel system. It's a work in progress. And I have multiple funnels now. I couldn't fucking be doing what I'm doing without funnels. And I didn't know that until a few months ago at the time of this recording. Funnels took my shit to the next fucking level. Now, I knew that they were powerful. I I understood that from gurus. People who are respected in the industry, who have made mazillions of bazillions of gazillions of dollars. I said mazillions, meaning millions and even more. Hence, mazillions. Okay? People who have been world record breakers in the world of internet marketing, advertising, promotions. I'm talking about affiliate marketing or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Or whatever other people fucking call it. Selling shit on the fucking goddamn internet. The point is, funnels. I heard about them. I knew about them actually for a long time. I just never had one. Because I was like, people have to be selling shit without having one. I hear they're good. And I get it. But there are thousands of tools. Like endless tools. Why a funnel? Okay, at some point, maybe I'll explore. Fu- no. Listen, what I should have said to myself is, Grove, you have to have a funnel now. Now, 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 now. I should have told myself that a year ago, but I didn't because I thought it's just like any fucking thing. It's something that you can take a look at or listen to at some point later down the road. Because it's just one of the innumerable things that people use to market. I get it. Somebody's using a funnel and that helps them, whatever the funnel is. Listen. Listen. Even up until about 48 hours ago at the time of this recording, I knew at that point how powerful to a degree funnels were and are. But I really didn't feel the power until... I connected my funnel, first funnel, the way that it should be connected. It wasn't fully established. I didn't fully establish a funnel until about 48 going on 72 hours ago. And when I did, I was like, holy fucking shit, shit, shit. Seriously, I was like, damn, O-M-G, I know you're like, Grove, are you fucking, yes, yes, I am fucking that serious, okay, yes, I am, because what it fucking does, I know you're like, you haven't even told us, you said that you explain shit and the gurus don't. I'm not saying they all don't. I'm saying a lot of them don't. It automates your shit is what it does. It puts your shit on auto fucking pilot. You have to build it like you build it any network. You have to do 
shit to it. Like, for me, it was complex and complicated. It was not fucking easy, okay? That's something I want for y'all to know. Some people are super smart, and they just get it, just zip, zip, zip like that. Boom, now they got a funnel. That's how the the gurus make it sound. It wasn't that way for me. There is so much information that I had to read up on. It took me months, months, months. Listen, one Sir Grove, scholar, whiz kid, okay, fucking worked at government intelligence agencies as a contractor to the U.S. intelligence. It took me months. I studied cybersecurity at many different universities and have certifications from different institutions, organizations. I studied (laughs) computer science through NYU, New York University, cyber, offensive, countermeasures, asymmetric warfare, and it took me months. You see, that's what the gurus do, is they they make you think that shit, you just integrate this thing boom whip zip zam boom boom what is the the expression um wham bam thank you ma'am they make you think it's some shit like that for me it wasn't it took a lot of fucking work i had notepads i had writing materials i had computer fucking files i had to study this shit okay you've got your domain then you've got your subdomain that sounds pretty fucking simple on the surface domain subdomain and then you've got your different naming authorities and then you have your i mean listen I'm simplifying it even in what I am conveying and imparting. Some people will go and they'll connect a funnel and they'll do whatever they think that they're doing. In my view, in order to do it properly, there's a fucking, there's an entire art and science behind it. And and I understand now what funnels do. The power of funnels and what they can do to change the game for us. Okay, there is someone who's an online marketer on one hand, online affiliate marketer on one hand. Okay, that's what that person does. They do affiliate marketing. If they're not using a funnel, they're in a different category. Okay, if they're not using the power of funnels, they're on some other shit that I don't even know or understand. They might be making hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars, whatever money they're making. If they're not using a funnel, I don't even understand what they're doing. In contrast to this other category, this other hand over here of how could you not be doing it without a funnel? And I know you're thinking to yourself, well, Grove, you just said they're making hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars. Isn't that good enough? But what if it could be a hundred fucking times that? Why wouldn't you be using a funnel? Why wouldn't you automate your system? And some people say that they've automated their systems or like make money on autopilot. What does that really fucking mean to them? Autopilot to me is true autopilot where you plug in the data, you build the shit, you're the engineer, you're the mechanic, you're the scientist, you build the motherfucking thing from ground up just like you build a stealth bomber, mechanical engineering. Okay, material science, you build this shit like you're a scientist at S4, whatever, Area 51, whatever, Air Force Base, right, Patterson, you fucking, I don't know, wherever they build secret aircraft, the Aurora, the TR-3B, whatever the shit is, triangular, flying, anti-gravity, you build the shit, How, how long does it take you, years, you build it. And they will come. And it's not he will come. Okay? That's the Mandela effect. There is no you build it and he will come. That doesn't make any sense. He's They're building a fucking stadium and they, the people, will come. It's CERN. Okay? It's residual quantum fucking distorted reality that it now says you build it and he will come. Which makes no sense. It's irrational. It's supposed to say like it used to say when the movie fucking first came out. And what millions of us remember. Build it. And they will come. Build it. And they will come. Okay? Get it? Roger that? Copy that. Understood. We have learned in and from the future... That time is not static. Time 
is malleable, in other words, changeable, and time is as Hugh Everett three decoded and Einstein and Rosen Berg Einstein Rise Rosen Bridge or whatever it is in quantum dynamic quantum electrodynamic <laughs> Rosenberg Ro- Rosenstein I don't know the Einstein Rosen Bridge is what the fuck I'm saying I know you're like well which which who who are they Grove like you got Einstein down who's Rosen well, let's look it up together because it's important to know if you're going to build a funnel and you're going to know that time is nonlinear and that it's malleable and it's not static and uh, you're going to know what Einstein knew and what his counterpart knew. <laughs> I don't know that they were counterparts, but their ideas came together and coalesced and uh, gelled. Um, <clears throat> and what Hugh Everett three knew that time is nonlinear. These are important things to know. So let's look them up. Let's look them up together. Mm, okay, here we go. Come on, computer. CERN and D-Wave are changing the fabric of our reality around us. So let's look at the fundamentals here. Let's go. Einstein Rosenbridge. So now it says super rich. I didn't say super rich. Let's try it again, motherfucking computer. You want to play games, AI? We can play them all day. Einstein Rosenbridge. There we go. Okay. So Einstein and Rosen. Okay. Well, who was Rosen? We know who Einstein was. Who the fuck was Rosen? Oh, okay. We're talking about a wormhole. Nathan Rosen. Mm-hmm. Says right here, space.com. Use the theory of general relativity to elaborate on the idea. Proposing the existence of what? A wormhole? Okay, so Nathan Rosen, all right, was, according to Wikipedia, not that Wikipedia is a scholarly source of information, but it pops right up, so for the sake of brevity, according to Wikipedia, quote, Nathan Rosen was an American Israeli physicist noted for his study on the structure of the hydrogen atom and his work with Albert Einstein. Mmm, Albert Einstein. So they were colleagues. And Boris Podolsky on entangled wave functions and the EPR paradox. The Einstein-Rosen bridge, later named the wormhole, was a theory of Nathan Rosen. So we know that wormholes are used to traverse time. We know that time is nonlinear. Hugh Everett 3 also decoded this information. Hugh Everett 3 and Nathan Rosen and Albert Einstein and us. We have confirmed that time is non-linear. Non-linear. So, chronologically speaking, think about it. The movie that I saw back in the 1980s, Filled of Dreams, he clearly said, or the voice in the background she, it, they, the thing, the whispers, the whisperers, the voice, the voices, whatever it was, the entity, it said, if you build it, they will come. It said they, okay, clearly, T-H-E-Y, everybody fucking knows that, but the Mandela effect altered the very fabric of our universe. If you build it, that is the funnel the funnel they will come now i can't guarantee that i cannot guarantee that i cannot give you any kind of financial investment legal business advice consult with a financial advisor who is reputable and hopefully licensed and That's what they do. That's not what I do. I simply share with you my experience as an explorer and what I have found to be. And what I'm saying to you is a lot of folks, a lot of people, they're not hip to the power of a funnel. And I know you're like, Rove, you're really going hard on the advertising, bro, like on the marketing and the promotion. Well, listen, it's not a gimmick. I don't do gimmicks. That's why I haven't really sold shit other than CDs and cassettes. And now clothing, that is 
fashion, attire, apparel, accessories. Yes, I'm emphasizing that, but that's not my sole or whole focus. I've never really sold a fucking product, if you think about it. Notice how I've never asked anyone to subscribe to anything. I've never said, hey, dude, subscribe. Hey, smash that bell. You know, I've talked about how I hate that shit. Some people do it. They do it. It works for them. I never knock their game, their hustle. I, I'm, not, I'm not doing that shit. I am saying, listen, it's not like I was looking for a product to get behind, to market, or to sell. I didn't know that I would be marketing funnels. I, I, did, I didn't know. I, 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 didn't, I didn't know. It just kind of fell into my lap like, oh, shit. This is real as fuck. The funnel shit kept coming. You know, like in dreams, how people say they they won the lottery because they saw some numbers in their dreams and shit. Many people have said this, and it's real. It's a real phenomenon. Listen, the funnels are for real. I have seen them in my dreams, and I saw them, and they kept calling me, and they kept saying, Grove. We are the funnels, and this, we are what you need to expand this 495L4 empire out into the multiverse for aerospace defense, ultimately Grove, funnels, funnels, we are the funnels, Grove, connect, intersect. And I know that sounds stupid. I know it sounds outlandish, and I know it sounds far-fetched. And no, for the record, there was no voice that actually said that. But in the abstract sense of it all, that is what was being said. That is what was being suggested and implied. I inferred and deduced that, and sure enough, the information had been corroborated. Listen, you want to hear something even fucking crazier in this book? Because these are all books. Just think of this podcast as an audible because it basically is. These are many books that I have written. I could have typed them, but why spend the fucking time to do that? It's the same as if you write a book, you type it, and then after you write a book and you type it, then you do the audio version of it. Well, here's the audio version of the books that I've written, if you will, so to speak. Pun not intended. So, I am literally trying to help you folks who are interested in doing something new, big, bigger than what you have been. I cannot guarantee your success. I cannot say to you that if you buy, invest in, purchase a funnel, you are going to be rich beyond belief and beyond imagination. I cannot, by law, tell you that. And by ethics... I cannot. It is not ethical for me to say that. You may invest time, money into a funnel system and it may not produce any money. And I hope that doesn't happen to anyone. But it can happen. I would say that in my view, from what I know and my experience and what I understand, internet sales, marketing, it's like anything in life, man. You're going to get from it what you put into it and I know that sounds pretty fucking self-explanatory I'm pretty straightforward uh but there are some people who you know they just I'm just I'm just saying it's it's just as a matter of record and reality there are people man who they just want to you know they just want to kind of like skate by in life they don't want to do a whole lot of work some some are more honest about that than others. But there are people who are fucking lazy, man, and they just expect to get rich quick. And they're looking for schemes. Well, funnels are not schemes. Funnels are jobs. You have to work. You have to do the work. You have to put... Yes, it's a fucking job like anything else. How many hours are you going to sit in front of the computer and work on your funnel? I don't know. Every situation is different for everyone. How long have I been sitting in front of the computer? 16 fucking hours a day for the past years. I just found out about funnels maybe, I don't know, like a year ago. I only purchased into, invested into, bought into funnels and the funnel system uh, and, starting des- and started designing my own funnels 
um, about a month ago. I actually almost deleted my funnels. Not intentionally, but also not entirely accidentally. At some point, I was like, I kind of started to back out of it. Like, do I really need this? Like, can I, because I'm, because I'm a frugal person. I was like, do I, do I really need this right now? Let me just make this money. And then, you know, from what I've invested in, in other areas, and then I'll just circle back the funnels. But the funnels kept calling me. They're like, Grove, you can't do that. You need us. And I was like, but I can make money in these other, these other areas. And they're like, right, but you, you need us. Grove, trust, just trust Grove. So I actually went back and reactivated my funnels that I had started to work on. And I immediately realized my folly in having even considered for a moment that I would uh, postpone my work on developing my funnels. I was like, how could I ever thought for a microsecond that I would not continue my development of my funnel system. I should have been working on this long ago and focused on this. Listen, there's a lot to know. Now, people have figured it out on their own. People have made tons of money doing it. And uh, some people have not made so much money. Some people have never made any money because they just haven't. What are the reasons why they haven't? I don't know those individuals. What I can say to you is this. I can I what I what I can confidently share with you that is in part is that if you want to develop your own funnels, create your own, own funnels, if you want to create your own funnels, develop your own funnels to scale up your business, to scale your business, to sell products on the internet. Products, services, services, products. Whatever the fuck it is that you want to sell on the internet. If you are not using a funnel yet, there are no gimmicks with me. If you want to join my team, I will give you the links. You can get your funnels, acquire them, pay for them, just like you would pay for anything else in life. And if you want to see how I'm doing it, well, then you can connect with me and we're teamed up in that way. It's fucking simple. You can, I'm not asking you to subscribe, but if you want to subscribe, naturally, you, there's always been that option. I'm talking about particularly regarding funnels. If you want to see how I'm using funnels to market, to promote hundreds of brands, hundreds of campaigns, Hundreds of companies. I said hundreds. I use funnels to do that. And I just started. So I'm a little bit more advanced than someone who hasn't started. And I learned, listen, I learned from some of the world's best. Now, does that make me the best? I'm not saying that it does. I could have learned from the worst. I could have learned from somewhere in between. I paid the money to learn from the best. I actually invested a lot of money over hundreds of thousands of dollars over the years to even get to funnels, to even get to the concept in nonlinear space time of funnels. Funnels will automate your business if you do it correctly. It will fully automate your business if you do it properly. That is one of the ideas behind having a funnel is that the funnel kind of sort of depending on the funnel that you're using. And again, it depends on the kind of software, the funnel that you're using, depending on the company that you're, that you're going through for software it will either automate your business or semi-automate your business. What I mean by semi-automate is that you can't just kick back <clears throat> and just the money pours in and then you never do anything else ever again. And then for the rest of your life, your system's just sending you money indefinitely. You, you have to continue to put work into the system. That's called semi-automation. It's being semi-autonomous. It's, it's a semi-autonomous system. It's not fully automated. 
A fully automated system, on the other hand, that is, whereas, a fully automated system would be a system where you're being sent money, you're making, earning money, revenue, you're generating revenue indefinitely. Now, I know a lot of people are like, Rove, I got that. I totally understand that. Okay, well, my question to you is this. Do you have a fucking funnel? Are you using a funnel to make money on the internet? And if not, because 99% of you are not, and that's the number, 99%. 99% of you are not using funnels for your online business. And listen, I'm not talking down to anyone. I'm not being condescending. As I said, I I just got started with my funnels just got started and um, I'm not bragging or boasting or gloating I'm excited and I want to share it with other people what it is that I've learned because I'm not greedy and I am the kind of person where I share it and pay it forward so I'm not in this to just make money by myself I want to help other people now I've long thought about this I'm like, I could just do this shit and just make this fucking money by myself, become fucking ultra wealthy, superstar, music mogul, record executive, music executive, uh, producer, executive music producer, record company, multimedia software technology company, research and development, aerospace, aerospace development company, fucking rich mega ultra fucking ultra mega fucking rich i could do that by myself and just be like basically a hermit and basically be like buddha you know monastic like a, i could become a monk i could just do this shit and be a penny pincher and fucking never give any money to anyone or help anyone or do anything for anyone ever and i could be a fucking asshole but that's not in my nature i'm not that kind of person man I've never been that kind of fucking person. I'm a team player. So am I selling people a gimmick? No, I'm not selling people a gimmick in any fucking way, shape, or form. I haven't sold anything to anyone in uh, 47 years Other than music and software, when I worked at the Rosetta Stone, I sold software. I worked at the Rosetta Stone a long time ago, like 15, 16, fucking going on 17 years ago, some shit like that. Back when Rosetta Stone was in its infancy and I became their top salesperson um, at the time in my region where I was then. And uh, someone taught me how to do it, groomed me. Um, for the position, for the role, and I did it. He had been U.S. Special Forces, and uh, his name was Eugene, and uh, he had been in Panama Station, where my father was stationed, and uh, and so he was a soldier, had been a soldier in the U.S. military, working special ops, special warfare, and then he was in a suit tie, jacket tie, and he was in this uh, role as a software salesperson. And he said he wanted out of that role. He was the number one uh, salesperson, and so he groomed me for the role. He said that I could do it, and he showed me how to do it. He taught me how to do it, said that he believed in me, and I ultimately did it, and I did it many times in a row. So between selling software, selling music, uh, I... I, I'm not someone who has a history of like selling this and selling that and selling this and selling that and selling gimmicks and gimmicks and gimmicks and gimmicks and gimmicks and gimmicks and gimmicks. I'm not into gimmicks. I don't fucking do that. That's not part of my character trait. It's uncharacteristic of me to do that. I am one Sir Grove and I have no history of that. I've sold music and I've sold software. Well, flash forward to. 47 fucking years down the road funnels just like when i told those kids in my neighborhood yo there's this new thing where you can play these fucking games that we pop that we pump quarters into we can play this at home and it's not that they didn't believe me they're just like mind blown like are you sure where prove it what no fucking serious no what come on where when how who what And I'm like, yo, it's called the Nintendo Entertainment System. Well, it's the same thing. This is a whole new universe of information. 
funnels, funnels. I'm not going to tell you you have to have a funnel. I'm not going to tell you that because that would be unethical and it would kind of be sort of illegal. I'm just saying because, you know, you're making an investment if you invest, (laughs) if you buy, if you purchase a funnel. So I'm not going to tell you it's something that you have to do. I am simply saying for those of you who are interested that is seeking that 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 is those of you who are looking to expand scale up your business enterprise online whether you have an existing business or you're thinking about getting started I use funnels I use funnels and I'm still learning how they work. I have decoded some of the system of funneling. I have decoded some of it. I wouldn't say a lot because there's a lot more to know, but I have decoded some. And the amount of time that it took me, I'm not saying that we're equal. You might get it a hundred times faster than I got it. Who knows? The point is, it's a learning process. I'm in the process If you do want to get into the funnels and involved and use them, utilize them, integrate them, implement a plan involving funnels being integrated into your online entrepreneurial ship your entrepreneurship, your being an entrepreneur. If you want to make money on the internet and you haven't made any money yet, if you're thinking about making money, if you're trying to make money, if you're contemplating, pondering, considering, huh, what am I doing in life? I've heard people are making money on the internet. I don't know if I will be successful, but I'm going to give it a try. Well, if you're someone like that, well... I encourage you to at least take a look at the links that will be in the description to this podcast. And thank you for listening to another episode of C4CW Casting 495 Celebrities Worldwide. This is a St. Jude moment. Ashton was a high-level athlete. And in an instant, your world flips and your healthy five-year-old competitive cheerleader has a brain tumor. And the physician was like, your best option is St. Jude. Receiving treatment that was life-saving for our child and knowing that that treatment would be of no cost to us was a huge weight lifted. Learn more at stjude.org. These sounds are the sounds of lower emissions. That's because one day soon, engines like these could run on lower emission fuel. Renewable diesel derived from plants that's engineered to keep millions of tons of CO2 out of the air. At ExxonMobil, we're working to supply the energy the world needs today, while playing a leading role in the transportation sector's transition to a lower emission future. It's one of the ways we're advancing climate solutions. Learn more at exxonmobil.com fuels.